Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Block Plays. I'm Wayne and welcome to my Lego room. So like most Ethels, I was into Lego as a kid. Um, built a lot of the Blacktron sets, which I still have a great love for. And then as soon as high school rolled around, you know, girls got involved, guitars got involved. So Lego sort of got put on the back burner for many, many years. And I think it was about 2013 when some friends from work decided that they were going to buy me two Star Wars micro fighters as a joke gift for my birthday. And that was a big mistake because from there on, I, I built them, I immediately took them apart and started to build a mock right there on the spot. And then from there on, it just it snowballed into what it is now. So in the beginning, I used to buy a lot of sets, um, but that quickly got really, really expensive just for you know two or three parts in a set that I that I wanted. I mostly buy parts of Bricklink just because it makes a lot more sense. Uh, because of the things, the type of things that I build. All right, so a little while after uh, I actually started building LEGO models again as an adult, there was a game trailer released on YouTube for a game called Horizon Zero Dawn. And in this game, there are a bunch of mechanical dinosaur creatures roaming around in the future. I really love the design of the tall neck, uh, but since the game was not just released at that particular point, I physically had to take a screenshot of it and then resize it digitally so that the dish on the creature's head matched the size of the biggest dish I had in my collection at that point. Printed it out, did a couple of sketches on top of it just to sort out some details because you couldn't really see the details on there. Posted it on Facebook, forgot about it. And then about two weeks after that, I got this really weird spammy type a message on Messenger. And it typically read, Hi Wayne, I am the what 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 So I left it. Uh, and then about two or three days after that, my curiosity was just killing me and I had to go and read it. Just, just so you know, you always have to read the spam messages just to satisfy. So I read it and it, it actually said, Hi Wayne, I am the community manager of Guerrilla Games. And I read through the rest of it. I completely freaked out, obviously. Double checked the guy's name on LinkedIn to make sure he was who he said he was. And then as soon as I sort of confirmed that it was actually Gorilla Games uh, getting in contact with me about a Lego model that I built, my skin just instantly went on fire. I was super, super excited. So Gorilla asked me to make building instructions for them so that they can build a few of their own for display at their offices in the Netherlands. Um, I had no idea how to do that, so I had to figure that out, get a digital model built, get the building instructions done, send that off to Gorilla. They were really, really happy. They have a few of them uh, at their office. And then during that time period, Gorilla was negotiating with Hideo Kojima, who is a legendary game designer from Japan. Um, and he was at their offices. And him being a huge LEGO fan, saw the Tolnik and he also wanted one of his. So a short while after that, the tweet came out that one of my models was standing on Hideo's desk in Japan. I redid the instructions and sent them back to Gorilla and they released them publicly. And since then, uh, I've received a ton of emails and photos from folks around the globe who have built their own versions of the mock. One big thing for me about the LEGO models that I build um, is to have quite a variety. Since, since I'm focused on you know, building spaceships and, and mechs, it can get pretty dull pretty quickly. Um, so every year that I do these things, and these only have a lifespan of about one year. Uh, so after brick fair is done, I break all of them apart and the parts get recycled and I start fresh with the new cycle. So there's usually, there's a couple of ways that I go about building these. There's almost always uh, some sort of concept involved, whether it is that I see something online that sparks an idea, or I sit down and make a few sketches on my phone and figure out something, I'm trying to push the shape a little of, of these objects so that they don't seem too familiar at the end of the day. Step two is usually then taking those sort of loose concept ideas into something more structural, trying to figure out which directions I should build to eliminate studs, 
because I simply do not like studs showing on my models. So then it's you know, breaking them down into individual pieces and then deciding which directions to build to get the model as smooth and as polished as possible at the end of the day. That would usually entail either jumping into LDD or to Studio to put these together or just figuring out in my head how I'm going to do this. So the last step is then obviously to get these things built, either from the LDD file or the Studio file or from just, you know, free building it from the sketch I have on hand. And most of the times when you actually start building these things, you run into issues. Uh, there's either a balancing issue, which you would never detect uh, you know, on an LDD file, or parts don't fit together quite as well as you thought they would, or the color flow on it is completely horrible, and you have to do you know, most of the sections on it. But at the, at the end of the day, you can build as many digital files as you like, but until you actually get your hands on the block, you are not quite sure how these models will turn out. So this little guy is a shining example of exactly how that particular process works. Because in the middle of this mech, there is this ball structure. And as you guys know, building balls in LEGO is no easy task. I did a lot of digital work trying to figure out which parts I could use to join the front and the rear parts together in the smallest fashion I could to get that overall ball shape and then provide myself with connection points for the arms and the legs. Now, this also went through three or four different color schemes until I settled on the quite sporty white, yellow, and black. Uh, if you guys are interested in how to get that particular style of building done, the link will be in the description below. This particular one is something completely new to me uh, in terms of, of the scale. Because I'm used to building in either you know, like micro or sort of minifigure-ish scale, this one is much, much larger, since this is the, you know, an entire bust of, of a mech. So you've got the head and the neck and the shoulder pieces just with a little mounting plate for it underneath. What's really fascinating to me about this particular model is the way that the head is constructed on the inside, the core of it. Uh, it has a bunch of nexagons tied together that provide a lot of different angles for me to build off of, which gives you that very, very organic, flowy shape that you get out of it, which is also quite hard to do with LEGO in general. The one thing I do quite a lot is I experiment with pieces. You know, how different pieces fit together. It's, it's almost like that game from Whose Line Is It Anyway, where you take something and you try and figure out different uses for it. So I would take something and then I try and figure, can I go this way with it? Can I go that way? How will I attach it? What can it be used for? And a lot of times those experiments seed ideas for, for builds. So one thing uh, new mock builders always have you know, a struggle with is they ask you, how did you come up with, with that particular piece? And it is basically just that method of experimentation. So in order to come up with all these weird and spectacular shapes. It, it helps to build up a mental library of all the different Lego pieces that are available and how they can interact or fit into each other. And those oftentimes spark new ideas and new methods of thinking on how to construct your builds. Thanks so much for stopping by and joining me in my Lego room. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, share and comment. We'll see you in the next one.